How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 14, and we have our final game of the regular season against Notre Dame. Kind of our rivals at this point. This is our fifth matchup against the Fighting Irish, and this is the first time we will play them while they are unranked. They are 7-4. and four. They're having a bad season. Obviously, we're expected to win this, but they do come in as the higher overall team. Uh, now, they lost a game pretty early on in the season to the current number two team in Clemson. Uh, but besides that, they've won everything except for the last three games. Not even impressive losses. Uh, a three and nine Wake Forest, a five and five Syracuse, and a four and seven NC State. So we have all of the momentum coming into this game. We get a play at home. We have never lost against these guys. I'm feeling it. I don't know. I want to say supremely confident that we can get this one done. Uh, we can quickly get through our recruiting. We don't have a whole lot to do. I think we're literally just sending a guy on a visit this week. Uh, but update wise, we do with this tackle David Day that we've been fighting for. Uh, we were 4,000 points behind a few weeks ago, but we are the only team to have offered him a scholarship. So we are now in the lead. Uh, and while I don't think think that we have to no we don't have to give him every single point 86 percent locked if he doesn't commit this week he will commit next week plus we have the visit this week uh so let's take uh whoop, whoop, taking points from other people let's take uh what 300 points away from him and then we're sorted by overall so we'll just go find the next guy mike allen Ooh, that's a little bit too far off. How about Jordan Dorsey? Uh, he doesn't have a scholarship, so we could fight back, but I don't think we have enough time. Is there anybody that we can... Okay, well, we're going to have to go by deficit because there doesn't seem to be anything good happening there. Uh, So Benjamin Harrison running back. We are down 765 uh, against TCU. It's either him or Adam Smith. Uh... Well, neither of them are great, so do we go wide receiver or running back? We're going to go wide receiver. Give him the 300 points, and we'll call that good. Uh, we just have to schedule a visit really quickly, and it is for Benjamin Harrison. And uh, well, we're going to send him to this Notre Dame game. Now we have a coach level up to put in, and uh, we're at a tough spot. We could unlock the Insta commit. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now because it won't matter for this season. But I'm really tempted just to not do any insta commit in this series. Uh, you know, puts a little bit more emphasis on actually being able to recruit. Uh, takes away what I find to be a relatively cheap mechanic. Um, I don't know. Maybe we allow ourselves to do one level so it's not game breaking. But uh, I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on that in the comments. So we will just put the uh, level up into the antifreeze. Try to make it so that we can't get iced if there's a big moment late here in this season. ESPN wise, nothing crazy happening. The top 25 is, I don't know, not expected to move that much. Clemson plays South Carolina, Michigan plays Ohio State, Auburn and Bama will play. Uh, and that's actually it for ranked matchups this week. So again, nothing too crazy here in this rivalry week, but that just means that there's a big chance for upsets. Uh, no matter what, if we win, we are into the playoffs. We are into the conference championship. Uh, and speaking of that, let's take a look at some conference standings as we are nearing that conference championship week. Uh, we clearly have the SEC East. We are perfect in conference. Our last game is out of conference uh, in the SEC West. 7-4 Bama and 7-4 Ole Miss are fighting for it. Auburn could be up there as well. 5-3. and three, uh, Well, this is, this is going to be crazy. Who knows who we're going to play? It's a toss-up at the moment. In the Sun Belt, our original conference, it is South Alabama up at the top, likely to stay there. In the ACC Atlantic, it's Clemson. No surprise, they've secured their spot in the championship game, and it looks like they'll be playing Miami. Uh, something could change. Does Miami play anybody? Uh, they play Pitt, so there's a chance if Pitt wins it that they could find themselves in the conference championship game at 7-5. and five. The American is led by Navy, followed closely by USF, UCF, and Cincinnati. 
Uh, the Big 12 is led by West Virginia, followed by Oklahoma. The Big 10, uh, well, we go by conferences or by divisions. So the Big 10 East is between Ohio State and Michigan. So whoever wins their game this week will win the division. That's a lot riding on that game. Uh, um, I think most people would expect Ohio State to win that one. In the Big 10 West, Wisconsin has the lead right now. And I will probably expect them to continue to win. CUSA East. It is Middle Tennessee and Marshall fighting for the top spot. And UAB, Louisiana Tech, and potentially Utah and North Texas in the West. Uh, our independents, we just have the two of them. They have not been great during this dynasty. This is actually a pretty good year for Army. 7-4, and four, but BYU is just 3-8. and eight. Uh, That's not good. The MAC East is Ohio and Kent State fighting for their spot. And in the West... It is Northern Illinois, probably free and clear at this point. Uh, I think that must mean that they have played all their games. The Mountain West Mountain, it is Colorado State and Boise State. The Mountain West West is Nevada and Fresno State battling. The Pac-12 North is Cal right now with a potential spoiler from Oregon if things go wrong. I think Cal plays Stanford. No, they are done. Nine and three. That's 12 games. So uh, they beat Oregon. So yeah, Cal has won the Pac-12 North. In the final uh, division, the Pac-12 South, it is going to be USC. Number five team in the country. They are undefeated in conference. Marquise and Radon are still first and third in the Heisman watch list. So we just need them to continue to have that synergy that they've seemed to have had recently. And uh, propel us to victory here. The Fighting Irish are at 97 overall with a 99 offense and a 95 defense. So they do have the slight edge in this game. I'm sure that our defense is going to struggle. So we just have to hope that we get the right breaks and that our offense can also perform. Um, I don't know what we go with. I'm kind of tempted to throw them into the, uh, the alternates. Have them wear green because that sounds kind of fun. Uh, and we're going to throw the pinstripe helmet. Uh, <laughs> we've already beat these guys up so many times. I think that we're allowed to make them look funny. Uh, we're going to just kind of make this a colorway game. So for us, we will go black helmet, black jersey, and black pants. Notre Dame currently with one of the better offenses that we faced off against. They pass the ball really well and they don't run it a whole lot. But they get a lot of yards and points defensively. Uh, they're just pretty mediocre. They do a decent job at slowing teams down, but obviously not the best in the world. For us, uh, we score the most points in the entire FBS. We do a decent job getting yards, but it's our defense that struggles. Uh, all things considered, we don't give up a crazy amount of yards or points, but we can't stop the pass. And if they yeah, get going throwing the ball, we could be in trouble. Uh, some guys visiting. I'm not at all worried about those visits. Uh, I'm just worried about the result of this game, and that is potentially huge. The top player for Notre Dame, 99 overall quarterback M. Parker, is injured. I'm curious if that's for a long time. Otherwise, they have a 97 overall right tackle, 95 overall strong safety. I'm worried about that strong safety. And the quarterback, broken collarbone, out for the season. So the best player on the Fighting Irish uh, is unable to play, and maybe that explains their record to some degree. Uh, there's also a left end questionable for this game it's a nice evening game here tonight that's gonna be an awesome atmosphere for the fans as we will hopefully come out winning and i guess we're wearing white at home uh obviously our changes to the uniform didn't save we lose the toss and we will be receiving the ball it is a calm night with no wind could be useful for us and we're gonna have Marquise bring out the opening kickoff from really deep in the end zone and that didn't work a little bit too late getting to the outside we get tackled really deep in our own territory we really need the offense to step up in this game so we're gonna see what they can do for us or run for Mike Fontaine on first down loses a yard it's not the way that we wanted to start Going to be pressed to put this one in the air on this second 11. They're bringing pressure, but we found Mike Fontaine. He jukes a man out, and he's still going 23 yards downfield. It's always good news when he's able to hold on to a pass while he's wide open. Just like the rest of the offense, Raynon hasn't been able to start games recently very hot, so we will hope that he can find some rhythm early in this one, and he has his first two passes completed. Now we'll see if the offensive line can give us a decent little push as we will run up the middle trying to get another first down. Mike 
found enough space. From the 48-yard line, it's time for a little play action. They're not bringing... No, they are bringing a lot of pressure. I'm just getting rid of it. No time to find a throw. We're lucky that that one is just incomplete. That's going to bring up a second and 10 for us. And they're pressed up at the line here. There's a chance that this could go awry for him. I'd say the pocket Marquise might have been open. B is wide open. It's Malcolm Williams. And he's not going to get a block. Oh, that should have been a touchdown. But we'll take the 41 yards. I'm going to be really disappointed if we can't find the end zone now. Uh, running it on the middle. Uh, okay, that didn't work. So far in this one, the running game hasn't quite been there. We'll try the read option to see if we can free things up a little bit. Radon has some space and looking for the corner of the end zone. He gets in 15 yards. He takes a little bit of contact, but is rewarded with six points and 15 yards onto his stats. Uh, a little bit of lack of awareness from that defensive back. Well, Alabama has upset number nine Auburn to win the Iron Bowl. Both teams finishing their regular season eight and four. I'm curious to see what that does for that SEC uh, divisional race as we allow them to return the kick. So he's breaking tackles, but he ends up behind the 20. We know that this Notre Dame team likes to pass, so we'll be uh, trying to prepare to stop the pass as much as we can. If at the end of the day that ends with us kind of getting beat on the ground a little bit, I'm not too upset. This one's a counter with a lot of space to work with. And, well, they're in the hurry up picking up yards. Gotta be honest, I get really tired of playing these hurry up, hurry up teams. It seems like every single team that we face just runs hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. It's never ending. Quarterback all the time in the world is eventually going to throw it away. Randall Tyree throws his first pass away for an incompletion. And on this second down, well, our coverage is okay, but it doesn't hold up long enough and they find a man open. No, maybe not. The refs are going to take a look at this immediately. I thought it was close. Wouldn't be surprised if they called this in, but also to me, that's out of bounds. So I think the way this game works, that's getting reversed. Let's take a look. Let's go. I'll take it. So our coverage gets us to a third and 10. As this is a screen, Franklin gets his tackle broken. Jenkins there, though, to get the stop. And the defense holds their first time out. Every once in a while, we have games like this, but we don't always do a good job of putting them away early. So the hope here is that we can score on this drive and maybe see the defense get another stop. Definitely a returnable kick for Marquise, but the blocking on the first gunner is non-existent so just not a lot of space to run let's keep throwing the football first and 10 looking to pass and we're gonna dump it off to mike fontaine just take the quick check down and be safe about it we don't need to be going crazy with long bombs in this game so uh, whatever continues to move the ball forward is fine with me I think probably the most disappointing thing of our offense so far this year has been our offensive lines run blocking. Uh, every once in a while, they have a play like that where they open up a gap. But for the most part, it's really underwhelming. It's honestly kind of a shame that we're leaving at the end of this year because I do think that they'll be pretty good next year. We just are a little bit too soon. First down, looking to pass again, and we'll try to find Marquise over the middle. Ooh, that was... A painful looking tackle, but he's got the catch. Seems that our passing is where we're finding the most success so far, so we'll stick with it for now. Looking to the air, throwing one a little bit late to Marquise, but it's enough to find him for a second five yarder. And uh oh, Marquise Jackson is hurt. Let's hope it's not bad. The leader in the Heisman race, and an absolute stud in his senior season. We gotta hope that that's not a big injury as we will look to throw, and oh my gosh. Nothing doing there. We get sacked immediately. Uh, loss of eight. This game's getting worse real quick. Just a bruised shoulder for Marquise. Out for two quarters, but we aren't losing him for a long time. Although this is not optimal. Second and 18, a long ways to go to keep this drive alive. We'll go with the slant route. We find Chad Bradshaw, and there's the first down. So someone else stepping up in Marquise's absence, and Radon, after taking a big hit there, making a good throw to make up for it. Uh, Re-injury risk is low for Marquise, but we are going to sub in Malcolm into that top spot. 
the way I see it is that we don't need to risk anything right now. If the game gets dire, we can bring him back. But as it stands, oh my gosh, a beautiful spin move from Mike Fontaine. Wow, 11 yards. That's something you don't see from him often. Anyways, as I was trying to say, as it stands, we don't need him. And if he comes back in later in the game, he's going to be very well rested and have a ton of stamina to do some work in the later quarters. The running game has all of a sudden opened up here as the first quarter comes to a close. We've got the lead up a touchdown, although we did start with the ball, but chance to make it two as we were able to stop Notre Dame on their first offensive possession. We will take to the skies on this first play of the second quarter, trying to pass while we're still a little ways out, and I don't really see anything I like. Although there it is. Oh, I threw that so riskily. I should have just scrambled. We could have had the first and goal. That's definitely a mistake from me, and this could be a mistake of a play call. We are going to run it up the middle. We have uh, JJ Barr in as a lead blocker. There's not a whole lot of space, but we make it work. And we do just enough to move the chains. So first and goal sets us up nicely. And uh, we're going to switch the direction of this run. I want to run it more to the right, I feel like. And that seems like a decent decision. We got three yards. If we can get three every play, we'll be in the end zone. Might be pressing our luck here, but I'm going to continue to run the ball. Certainly, they're going to start to bring a ton of pressure. There it is. The blocking holds up okay. And we do move forward, but... Now it's third and goal inside the five, and this is a dangerous position to pass. So I don't think that we're going to. Uh, oh no, JJ Barr is not in as the running back, so we're going to audible this to make sure that he gets it. And we're going to run it towards the edge because they are really jamming the center of the line there. The line holding okay. JJ Barr doesn't get into the end zone, but he gets close enough. That we can just try a raid on Randell QB sneak. So as long as we don't go backwards... This will be a good play call no matter what. Either we score points or we pin them deep at the goal line. I expect a touchdown and right on over the line and into the end zone. Increases our lead over this Notre Dame team to two touchdowns. That's a great way to start this game. We just need to continue to slow down Notre Dame. This is a big test for the defense. Um, I mean, I can't feel too great about the game though because... They might be a 97 overall, but they're 99 overall quarterbacks injured. Just trying to put myself in their shoes with that situation because I'm fairly certain without Radon, we would struggle to move the ball. This looks like it's going to be a run towards the edge, and we are there to meet it. Almost looked like a face mask, but it's not called. Back into the hurry up for Notre Dame. It's second and six, and we're ready for the pass. They are stepping back. Guys are open. Where are they going to throw it? Sandcastle gets beat. Calvin Garrett just burned him. Sandcastle, another one of those guys that you just expect to do better than he ends up being. And a little bit of a shame. This is going to be a run, a QB keeper. I did not expect the option. And this backup is doing some work. Well, we can't allow that. So let's bring a little bit more pressure. Rush four guys instead of three. And Don Riley gets to the quarterback. I might get called for a penalty, but oh my gosh, where is the tackling from this team? It's a first and goal. Almost got to the quarterback, but it just wasn't in time. So they moved to the five-yard line again, expecting the run. This one kept by the quarterback again. It's another read option, and they burn us twice in a row with it. All right, Notre Dame found a way to answer us back. Um, Aaron Jenkins will be returning this kick in the absence of Marquise. So I'm going to have him bring it out. <laughs> that was a terrible decision. If he breaks that tackle, it's fine, but oof, we're far. Well, 83 yards for us to go to get down the field and find the end zone for the third time in this game. I don't have the highest hopes for it, but I'd like to think it could happen. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We're going to scramble. Kind of thought that uh, Fontaine would run deep, but he didn't play that the way that I expect him to. So we just find the yards on the ground. Second and one back to the air. We're looking over the middle. I expect them to be open and there it is. Uh, Eric Perkins, not a name often called, able to find some space. I would not mind if this was the final drive of the half, but there's still three minutes to go, so can't expect that to happen. A good run for Mike Fontaine, plenty of space, and he continues to find those gaps. This might be one of his best performances of this season. Let's just continue to feed him. 
Uh, anytime he's having a decent game, we're going to utilize that as much as we can. A misdirection for Fontaine. He finds the stiff arm. She isn't. Nobody comes to slow him down, so we get seven more. Will they defend the bubble screen? They kind of look like they want to, but I've seen better. So we're going to call it in and see JJ Barr. Uh-oh. <gasps> that was dangerous. Blocking just wasn't quite there. Going to go back to hand and get off. Third and three, up the middle. Mike finds space again, and Mike Fontaine off to the races. He's going to find the end zone. Just like that, he breaks free. We've already rushed for over 100 yards as a team, and that is one of his biggest runs, I think, so far of his career. He does not have a lot of speed, but Notre Dame just couldn't catch up to him. So we increase the lead back up to two touchdowns, and we will kick this one off, allowing Notre Dame to return it. And the return team doesn't get there, so decent return. They'll have decent starting field position. But just 2 minutes, 15 seconds, and 3 timeouts for the Fighting Irish to work with. Not going to expect them to be phenomenal, uh, but if we could tackle them, that would be nice. On the jet sweep, we do stop them before they can get anything, and oh my goodness. Where's the coverage? Feels like uh, Notre Dame's going to tie this one up almost immediately. We are really struggling in that department so far this year. I'm expecting a run. I'm bringing pressure. Running back's going to be wide open in a second here. And there he is. And Spencer Stanley gets the pick. I actually had a little bit to do with that. Spencer Stanley off to the races. Is this going to be a pick six? It is. So we increase the lead to three touchdowns as we make a good play. And the true freshman gets another interception on the season. It's not often that uh, my user has something to do with a good play, so I got to toot my own horn when it happens. It's nice to finally see us getting a nice break on the ball on one of those passes. And I'd love for it to happen again. Looking, looking, and oh my gosh, Phillips, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. Kind of felt like there was a chance for us to get another interception there, but... This doesn't work out. Kale Mackey a mile away from his man. And oh, I thought Brooks was getting up there to pick it off. Well, so far when we bring some pressure, it seems to work pretty well for us. So we're going to keep it up. Second and six. Quarterback feeling the pressure. Moves around in the pocket. And there's Spencer Stanley getting burned like we are kind of used to. Hop into the zone for just a little bit as Brooks will be the one coming on the blitz. We almost got to the quarterback. We need a good tackle here and people are just missing. Oh, disappointing again. Let's change it up a little bit. Put in an extra lineman and see if that gets us that pressure on the QB that we need. This one thrown and maybe broken up, but at least dropped. And just a minute and 11 in three timeouts now for Notre Dame. So we will hope to slow these guys down. User in Kale Mackey doesn't quite work, and it's Sandcastle getting beat once again. Notre Dame takes their first time out. Well, we got to hope for the best. They continue to throw as we kind of expected. Don Riley gets beat. Broken tackles. It's a first and goal, and another timeout taken. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a run up the middle here, although I'm not expecting it. And there it is. And Don Riley, I don't. What was he doing there? He was just falling down right off the start of the play. Had a chance to make the tackle, but completely missed. All right. Well, I probably won't be returning this one. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm incredibly greedy. We'll see if Jenkins can do it. Uh, getting some blocks. Beautiful blocks. And yeah, look at that. Aaron Jenkins out across the 35. We don't have a crazy amount of time to work with. And our best receiver is... Still out with a minor injury, but all three of our timeouts might be enough for us to find the end zone here as we will throw it to Williams and it's picked off. That uh, defensive back knew exactly what route was coming. He was on him like glue and unfortunately the pass goes right into his hands. So our three score lead could be reduced to just two. And then with Notre Dame getting the ball to start the third quarter, could just be reduced to one, which is a real shame. Pressure there. Kale Mackey drops the interception. Oh, you got to get that. So, so disappointing. Should have been a pick six or second in the game, but he can't hold on. Second and ten. I'm going to continue to use the defensive lineman because I feel like it's working a little bit. Pressure on the quarterback, and he has to throw that one away. 
Well, shoot, this is working. Not going to do this for every single play, but until it stops working on this drive, I'm using the defensive end and going in the cover three this time. Well, okay, there's, there's us getting beat. <laughs> what can we do? Oh, that's a false start. They go in a hurry up. It's a little bit too much for the offensive lineman. That'll slow him down and back him up for us. I'm just hoping that at most we give up a field goal. I don't want to give up anything more than that. Somebody's got to be open and... Oh! Smith almost got in there and got the interception. The zone working surprisingly well for us on this drive. They look back to throw once again and... Oh, I should have been able to make a break on that ball. Dang it. Thought the pass was going to be shorter to the running back and not to the wide receiver, so... Wasn't in the area. This one getting bounced and Whitlock just can't get off his block for a chance to pick it off. It is fourth and three, though. They've got the field goal formation in. And I think we might bring Marquise in for the kick return after this. I assume this kicker can make this. Uh, it's up and it's through easily, but we got to have a better return man than Jenkins. So we let Marquise sit for a quarter with his bruised shoulder. But the good news about a kick return is that if it goes well... Uh, he's not going to get hit at all. The blocking, pretty good. Marquise Jackson off to the races with time expired on the half. He's in a foot race. The 10, the 5, into the end zone. We will increase our lead on the 104-yard kick return. Marquise coming back from injury with the fresh legs. Ends the quarter with a bang. And we can just kick this extra point. Go up 35-17. to 17. And we can head into the locker rooms with that to think about. Uh, absolutely fantastic first half for us. The defense, honestly, not all that bad. They have an interception. Uh, a pick six, actually. They have some stops here and there. Uh, the offense is doing an all right job. They could be better. We have an interception. Uh, but we've scored a ton of points, and we are firmly in control of this game. If the defense can come out and get a stop to start this third quarter... Uh, I think it's going to be adios to Notre Dame. So we will have Frederick get us underway in this second half. Again, making it a returnable kick for them. I want to try to pin them inside the 20, and it works tremendously. That was a big hit. The zone seemed to work surprisingly well at the end of that half, so we're going to stick with it for now. Looked like it was going to be a run, and they dump it off short. Go to the little check down, and we only give up two yards. Going to be looking for a run to come eventually. Maybe a counter, as that is exactly what the play is. Smith gets there, and it's just barely in time. Third and inches. I would not be surprised to see the quarterback keep this on some sort of option, or it'll just be another counter, and the blocking is superb. So they get out almost to midfield. First and 10, almost at midfield after some quick movement from these guys. And again, we're kind of letting them take those checkdowns, but we're not giving up a whole lot of yards. Wouldn't be surprised to see another handoff on this one. The running game has been working better than the passing game recently, but no, they will step back looking to throw two guys to cover, but we get to the quarterback. And it's a sack for a loss of eight as David Wilson got in there and forces the third and long. Well, no, not a whole lot to worry about now. Just need the one stop. Motioning over to that right side has me a little bit worried, but we should be okay. Trying to cover it, and Logan Smith oh, makes the jump on the ball, and it's another dropped interception for him. I'm a little bit surprised as to how good the coverage has been so far in this game compared to what we've been seeing. Maybe we should have just been running in the zone all along. This kicker doesn't want Marquise to take one to the house, so he just shanks it out of bounds. And from the 32-yard line, we will take over looking to really put another nail in the coffin at Notre Dame. Williams comes down with it at about midfield. A beautiful reception. Not a world-beating day for Radon uh, when he's using his arm, but he's doing good enough in creating quite a bit for us. Should have had more than two yards on that run, but I kind of messed it up. Well, let's see. We have this play set up for Mike Fontaine. Will it work in our favor? The blocking, not at all there. We're just getting a yard out of it. 
Tempted to send Marquis deep, but I like the deep curl, although they're covering it surprisingly well, although he was wide open. A is open. Oh my gosh, there was no risk of me getting hit on that one. I could have sat in the backfield for another three years, maybe even a decade before they got to us and sacked us. So the patience pays off and we find ourselves inside the red zone. Some more opportunities to run and JJ Barr getting a decent carry up the middle. I'm looking for JJ again on this pass. Second and six, will he be open? Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Thought I saw something, obviously I was wrong. Well, let's just continue to throw third and six, looking for the running back on this one. He's wide open. Mike Fontaine into the end zone. He's got another touchdown on the day and we have just continued to increase this lead in the third quarter. Well, if the defense gets one more stop, it might be enough to call it. Uh, certainly our fourth quarter will consist of a decent amount of clock burning because at this stage in the season, with the scare that we've had with Marquise earlier in this game, the last thing that we need to deal with is an injury. So uh, we might even bring in the second string offense. Just anything to make sure that we're not taking a bunch of injuries is over the middle. My goodness. Ooh. Can't leave a man that open. Did I hear there was a flag on the play? Personal foul. Hmm. I was hoping it was coming back, but it is completely the opposite. Spencer Stanley getting called for that. He's lucky that he has a pick six in this game, because otherwise, I don't know if we would give him the leeway. I expected the pass. It doesn't show up. They're looking to throw all the time in the world. And the quarterback actually just has to throw that one out of bounds. We've given up 200 passing yards to this QB, but outside of that, he really hasn't had a whole lot of success. And now we have a third and 11 where we will see what we can do. I see a guy open, but he's going to catch it and go out of bounds. So they get two yards, fourth and nine. We get the stop there, but it is not over. They're going to go for it on fourth and nine, a pivotal moment in this game. Can we get the stop looking to throw? We're there with Sandcastle and he gets the tackle. Oh, again, my user actually works well for us that time. It's a turnover on downs. So it seems that the trend continues. We play these big games against Notre Dame and we just continue to body them time in and time out. The only reason to keep the starters in at this point is to continue to allow them to build some stats that is important because we're in some big races and Sean Stewart with a nice catch. Not even sure how he spotted the ball, but he went down and got it. We cross midfield with our 13th first down of the game and Mike Fontaine, oh, should have had a lot more yards, but again, I just ran into a blocker. All righty, looking for the short pass. I could see Marquise or Malcolm being wide open. Marquise is absolutely catching this. No, ah, why is it they always mess up when I try to talk him up like that? Just kind of bounced off of his mitts, hit the turf. Now it's third and six. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I am a huge fan of this risky throw. Chad Bradshaw can't come down with it. And it's fourth down. Fourth and six. The game wants me to punt it away from our, our opponent's 45. I'm going to say no to that. They're bringing pressure outside the pocket. A lot of space for Radon. And we're going to find just enough to get that first down. Well, let's keep running the ball. This is what will likely be the final play of the third quarter. And we're just going to continue to allow Mike to pick these yards up. He's doing a great job so far in this game. So that's going to do it for this third quarter. Hands up because we are headed into the fourth. Looking like we're about to complete the perfect regular season 12-0. Uh, we already know that we're going to the conference championship. So at this point, the win is for what's beyond that conference championship game. I'm not sure what the seeding will look like, but certainly we want to be the top spot. Make it a little bit easier road for us throughout the playoffs. And that starts with just finishing in this fourth quarter. A lot of pressure. Nobody open, but a lot of space for Radon. Can he make the safety miss? He can. Radon jukes back. 23 yards. Inside the 10 for the first and goal. We will hand this one off to Mike because he's four yards shy of a 100-yard game, and that has been rare for our running back so far in the day. And oh my gosh, that was a grown man run. Mike Fontaine just absolutely trucked two guys on his way into the end zone. He deserved that. 
And oh my gosh, number two, Clemson loses to South Carolina. A close one just by a touchdown. They take their third loss. They are already in their conference championship game, but now they run the risk if they lose that game, not being in the playoffs at all. Well, this has certainly been Mike Fontaine's best game of the season. Uh, I can't say that I expected a whole lot from him in this game, but he's stepped up really well. This could be intercepted or caught. We just got bossed. I think that we're going to challenge this. I, there's a chance he was out of bounds, but I also just want to take a look at it. I don't think we'll need our timeouts, so even if he is uh, in bounds, that's fine. Oh my gosh. He came down with it. He almost got two feet in. What an incredible catch. The fans are not happy. We're getting booed like crazy for that. Uh, which is a little bit confusing to me. Uh... Anyways, it was worth the timeout just to see an incredible play like that as they are stepping back to pass. And we're there with Kale Mackey, but we can't get the interception again. This has legitimately been some of my best user in this game in a long time, and we just can't get rewarded for it. It's kind of a shame. This one almost there in time, but they get the out route for the first down. Let's see what we can do. We just got to slow them down. We don't even have to stop him, and there's me getting beat. Oh, right as I say something, I start to get torched. Let's try to bring the blitz. See if that can work, especially if they end up running the ball on this. This could be pretty solid. First and ten. Pressure gets the quarterback, but he finds a man and completes it for nine yards. I'm just going to keep blitzing at this point. Now I'm angry. We can't get to this quarterback because our coverage won't hold up long enough for the pressure to get to him. Second and one, it's going to be a handoff, a counter. Don Riley gets to him, but it's not enough. And they move the chains. You got Durham Finch out in the flat in the pass coverage here. And, well, that was just weird all around. Plenty of guys open. They find one for six. How about this second and four? Pretty tight formation for Notre Dame. Expecting the run, and they do actually hand it off. I kind of thought it was going to be a play action when they did snap it, but it works in our favor that time. We have the third and six to deal with now, and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to use her sandcastle out on the edge. I'm not sure this is going to work as well as I hope it will, but something. That man stepped out of bounds. He gets the catch in the end zone. This is going to be an illegal touching. He just ran too deep into the end zone. So it's a loss of down and five yards back for Notre Dame is... Now uh, they have to convert on 4th and 10. Certainly not going to be easy for them. What can we do to slow them down? It's a slip screen. Typically, we should do pretty good stopping these. And Jenkins says no to that. Shuts it down. And that's got to be ball game. We haven't gotten as many uh, yards necessarily for our starters as I would have hoped in our stat padding quest. But I'm not going to risk the injuries in the remaining 3 minutes and 45 seconds of this 4th quarter. So we've brought the backups in, and it's time to burn the clock. A first down would be massive here, and allowing us to burn below three minutes. Warren just fighting, pushing at the line, but he can't find his way across. Ooh, I don't know if we get this play off in time. Nichols motioned over on the jet sweep. There's the snap, and getting north, he finds a lot of space. Kind of was stumbling down, but moves the chains for us, and we get the first down. And it just fucking froze! It's not frozen. What? The game just froze and then unfroze. I've never seen that in my life. Uh, okay. Well, we're running a read option with Williams here, and... Uh, he's gonna take a little bit of a hit, but... Oh, wow. I have hundreds of hours of playing this game on the, uh, RPCS3. And I've had plenty of freezes, but I have never had the game unfreeze, so I thought for sure we just lost every single second of this game and I was going to have to restart the recording. So we got blessed by the RPCS3 gods. Uh, so thank goodness. Hand this ball off. Notre Dame not taking their timeouts, so we're not going to try to run the score up on them. Seems there's enough mutual respect between our two teams. So we can just let this clock run out. Run it one more time up the middle and Warren has the first down, so even if they were taking timeouts, it wouldn't matter. So we will come out in the victory formation. We don't need to run another play. 
but we will take the knee to get the extra XP on the game. And we can walk out with another victory, 12-0 on the season. Uh, 49 to 17, we bodied Notre Dame this time. Uh, gotta say, if they had their 99 overall quarterback in, this might be a different story, but we came out and we executed as well as we needed to. And I think I'm not alone in being surprised at how well the defense did in their pass coverage today. Mike Fontaine is player of the game, and he is absolutely deserving of that title. That is our best rushing game of the season by far. It has to be 204 yards on the ground, 207 through the air. Uh, absolutely killed in time of possession. Uh, and we come out with a beautiful victory, 49 to 17. 28 second quarter points is absolutely fantastic, especially uh, that return from Marquise to end the half. That was fantastic. Uh, Mike is again, offensive player of the game, 17 carries for 104 yards and two touchdowns. And then three receptions for 41 yards and another touchdown there. Spencer Stanley, defensive player of the game with that pick six. Uh, their quarterback for being a backup, very serviceable. 23 of 34 for 273, but he had one interception and he should have had a whole lot more. So that does it for our regular season. 12-0 through 14 weeks. And we come out on top against our rivals who were kind of struggling this year as they finished the season seven and five they're going to be looking for some sort of mediocre bowl uh let's advance to this week 15 bye and kind of see where the cards have fallen well we do get that left tackle david day to commit so that's another high overall player big recruiting battles lee sims locks us out some people commit elsewhere uh but you know for a team that we aren't really too invested in the recruiting for we're doing a decent job uh, more XP, we stay at number one, and let's take a look at this top 25 to see how many crazy things happened, how many losses. We saw that Clemson lost to South Carolina. Gamecocks move up to number 11 in the country. Uh, number nine, Auburn lost. Michigan <laughs> loses to Ohio State. They fall from number seven to number 17, taking their fourth loss of the season. There's the Auburn one. Uh, they're right next to Alabama. Both teams probably disappointed in the year, but if you beat your rival, it's good. USF loses to UCF. And dropping out of the rankings is Louisiana and Purdue. Uh, kind of an interesting season. There are, look at 7-5 and five Georgia. 6-5 and five Kansas is on the top 25 list. That is insane. So many four-loss teams. You got South Alabama at 10 and 1, and they're only ranked 15th behind multiple 8 and 4 teams. Like, very, very many. There's been so much chaos this season. I'm sure that West Virginia thinks that they belong in that uh, number two spot, but as it stands, they should at least make the playoff. After a pretty mediocre game for Marquise and having to sit out a little bit of it injured, he drops down three spots to number four on the Heisman list. Radon moves up a spot, but it's Kevin Jones, the Wisconsin running back, who takes over atop that leaderboard. Uh, you hate to see it. I think we're going to have to go absolutely crazy in the SEC championship game if we want one of our guys to win the Heisman. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. In the next one, we'll play the uh, conference championship game, and then we will get the playoffs set, and we will see... Uh, who's in and what seed that they managed to acquire. If you liked this video, if you like it when we beat Notre Dame, please feel free to scroll down just a little bit, hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and then head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and as always, the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the TL boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.